Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for our webinar, uh, Defining an Inclusive Community at the Langley School. Uh, we are thrilled today uh, to share a number of perspectives with you throughout the webinar, and we're going to start just briefly with some introductions. We've got three members of our faculty and staff here that will be leading the webinar, and embedded within the webinar, you're going to hear from some other members of the Langley School community. My name is um, Eleanor Scully, and I am the head of the school, and I'm thrilled to be offering this uh, webinar for the first time because throughout my educational career, both when I was a classroom teacher and a school administrator and eventually as a head of school, issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion have been paramount in my mind as I think about how to create the right learning culture in, in a school environment. My background, um, Early in my career when I was in the classroom, I did a lot of research on gender um, and helping students to support them, uh, helping to support students as they think about their own development around their um, gender identity. Um, but, but issues of equity and inclusion have been at the forefront of what I've been thinking about around student learning from the, from the earliest part of my career. My name is uh, Nola Ray Cronin, excited as well to be here with you guys today. Um, so I am the head of the middle school and I have a background in diversity and inclusion and in student wellness. Um, as a former diversity director, um, as well as a woman of color, um, this topic is not only personal, but also a professional um, uh, piece that I feel really strongly about the success of all of our students. And so excited to be able to share these things with you, but also um, see these things play out in our community. And hi, my name is Dr. Sarah Sumwald. I'm the Director of Social and Emotional Learning here at Langley. Um, and I run our signature social and emotional learning program titled REACH. Um, and that stands for Raising Emotional Acuity, Cultural Responsiveness, and Healthy Behaviors. And one of the primary pillars of our program is teaching students how to be culturally responsive, um, helping them have a deep appreciation for their own and others' identities, um, and really sort of understanding how to respond to injustice. So this is a, something that I've thought deeply about over the num past number of years um, as we've built this program. So what we would like to do today um, is do two things, tell you just a little bit about Langley, but also tell you a little bit about how Langley thinks about this work. So Langley is a preschool through eighth grade school located in McLean, Virginia. We are near the Tyson's Corner area and we have been um, in operation since 1975. Gener um, for, so generations of young people have come through our program. Oh, 1942, that's so hilarious. We're 75 years old, but we've been here since 1942. 51% um, of the students who attend our school are girls, 49% are boys, so that really just tells you we're kind of evenly divided in our commitment to co-education. We have a, a low student-teacher ratio, meaning that our teachers really get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with students. 40% of the families who enroll their children in our school identify as diverse in some way, which is a, st a statistic about which we are very, very proud. We conduct our classes on a nine acre campus that is actually kind of tucked away in the Tyson's Corner area. Most people, when they come visit us, don't even realize how much of our campus is kind of tucked off of Balls Hill Road. And really at the heart of our model, is a belief in a student-teacher-parent partnership that really, um, because we have youngest, uh, young learners who mature through their middle school years, we know that it's really important for um, teachers and students to be deeply connected in the educational process, and we include parents in that as well. Today, we are going to talk about why inclusive communities are so important and vital to the educational process. We're going to share some research. We're going to share a lot about our approach and our thinking. But you're also going to hear not only from um, Nola Ray, Sarah, and me, you're going to hear from a parent, you're going to hear from a student, and you're going to hear from a teacher. Now, um, as is always the case when you use technology, we are confident that our video streaming will work, but there's always a small chance that it won't. If for some reason you're having a hard time picking up the audio um, embedded video portions of this webinar, I hope you'll send us a question and let us know. We're also going to share with you after the webinar some links to the interviews that are embedded as well, just because we're using snippets of it the web in the webinar, and it may pique your interest to hear more. They're not lengthy, but we wanted to be sure you had access to that content after the webinar. As a head of school, one thing that I um, am charged with in partnership with my team is to really think about and explicate for families and for students why inclusivity is so important. 
I have always said, um, and my team, um, we talk about this a lot when we are together in meetings, we believe passionately that diversity and multiculturalism is a precondition of, ac of academic excellence. What I mean by that is I don't think a school can be excellent, truly excellent in all ways, unless we are welcoming a broad range of students to the learning environment. There is a lot of powerful research about why multicultural um, environments are better for student learning. And I just want to touch on a couple of them before I turn the rest of the webinar over to Nola Ray and Sarah. One of the things that we know is that students need to learn where they feel comfortable, where they feel known and celebrated. Um, one of the things that makes a student free to learn and to maximize their potential in any academic program is feeling like they belong in a school community, that this is their school, where they see their racial background, their gender, their ethnicity, their religious affiliation reflected back to them in the curriculum so that this feels like their home and where they have opportunities to learn about people who are different than they are. So we often talk about the concept of windows and mirrors as being important in education. We strive at Langley to make sure that every student who comes to our school feels like this is their community and they have opportunities to learn about people who are different than they are. When you lean into that kind of learning, that enriches the kinds of conversations you can have in classrooms. When you're looking at issues from multiple perspectives, you're reading texts who are authored um, by different individuals, when you are looking at historical um, issues from a range of perspectives, that makes the, the learning so much deeper. And we know that as children move through the world, as they leave us at Langley and go to high school, as they go to college, as they live in their neighborhoods and they navigate the world, they are going to need to be interacting with lots of different types of people. I think there is no more important time in our history as a country than now to help students lean into understanding people who are different than they are and finding ways to have respectful, curious and engaged conversations who are um, with their peer group and to do that in a way that celebrates um, and really extracts all the meaning that can come from living in a truly diverse and inclusive community. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to Nola Ray to give us some grounding. So as Eleanor shared, uh, creating an inclusive school environment is really crucial to uh, student success and academic success of all students. Uh, but what does it mean when we talk about inclusion? And what do schools mean when they talk about inclusion? For some schools, it might mean uh, the number of diverse students in the classroom. But for us here at Langley, it's really important that we see inclusion as so much more. It's about the way our students feel each and every day they're part of our community. As you can see, the Oxford Dictionary defines inclusion as the act of being included within a group structure. This work demands that we transcend our outdated views of diversity and ensure that all students find Langley as a place where they belong. And that every day, every student can bring all parts that make them unique to our community, to the class, to the field, um, and to the playground. It also means that it's important, as Eleanor shared, um, that we provide all opportunities for students to experience other points of reference for authentic learning and understanding. And as we continue to do this work, it is crucial that we balance our understanding of best practices with the voices of our community. So I'm proud to introduce you to a current parent of a third grader um, who's been part of the Langley community for several years. Listen as she sh shares her experience in finding belonging for her family here at Langley. Definitely look for a school where you feel like this is a good fit. We can grow in this environment, this would be a good place for my child. My child will feel at home. They will feel that sense of community. They will feel included. Um, they will feel comfortable because that helps the, the learning experience. If your child doesn't feel comfortable, if they don't like to come to school, you're going to have a difficult um, time. And certainly when you think about the sacrifices you're making financially, when you think about the sacrifices you're making from a time standpoint, you're going to feel a little reluctant to make those sacrifices if your child isn't enjoying the experience. If your child, even on a day when they're sick or a day when they don't feel like learning, still wants to go to that environment, they're still talking about it, that's probably the place for you. So I wanted to take a minute. Um, we often hear the terms diversity and multiculturalism, um, but I wanted to take a minute to really explain 
what they mean, and really how we strive to embody them here at Langley. So diversity, when we really think about that word, refers to the range of identities that exist in a group of people. So it's really um, a quantitative assessment of different identities. Common identity categories are often referred to the big eight social identifiers and include ability, age, ethnicity, gender, race, religion, sexual orientation, and socioeconomic status. And what we know is that research shows that diversity in educational settings has powerful positive effects on students' learning and on their relationships. So in terms of numbers at our own school, um, Eleanor mentioned that 40% of our families identify as ethnically diverse, um, something that we're really greatly proud of. And 18% of our students receive tuition assistance, um, totaling $1.9 million of assistance that's rewarded to families. And maintaining diversity across these categories is critically important for us um, in order to ensure a rich educational environment. Multiculturalism, in contrast, is more of a qualitative assessment of how really the community embraces diversity. And it's critical to us um, that we understand and appreciate and teach our students to understand and appreciate the beauty of difference and really how such differences, such as diversity, add tremendous value to our community. So multicultural um, education really strives to ensure that every student here um, feels seen and heard through our curriculum, through the materials and physical space of our school. Um, and so we embody this in a number of different ways. We'll talk about a few of these ways in slides to come, but those include our academic curriculum, our SEL curriculum, um, the ways that we set up our classrooms and our office spaces um, around the school. So it's always the most impressive when one of our students can really articulate how multiculturalism is embodied here at Langley. So we're going to hear now from one of our eighth grade students, um, also one of our student leaders on student council, um, talk about really his experience with how his background has played out in the classroom. Being half Lebanese and having all of my dad's side of the family immigrate from Lebanon when he was just in high school and my mom being half Chinese, half Panamanian and having my grandfather on her side needing to immigrate when Portugal was in Macau and invading. Um, when we're reading, especially in current events, different articles about immigrants, I am able to share my view on how important it was for both sides of my family really to leave where they were, but also I am able to see other kids' views who maybe haven't, don't have somebody on their side of the family that has immigrated, and I'm able to really add to the conversation, but also they are really able to add to my view and not um, always being one-sided, either everybody goes in or not anybody comes into the U.S., but really being able to see both sides. As Lucas has shared, um, inclusion, the way we shape it, is present both in our classrooms as well as conversations students have, but we see it really as a multi-pronged approach. For us, we think about the composition of our community, how we're supporting um, both uh, our hiring of faculty and staff and administrators, as well as how we're developing a really rich, uh, diverse community of students each year through our admissions process. We think about our shared community values around our mission and our community contract, uh, the experiences and events students have and families have throughout the year. When it comes to our strategic, strategic uh, priorities, um, that really falls in line with uh, the work of our board, um, the development of our uh, social emotional learning and the REACH program that you heard a little bit about already from Sarah earlier, and our investment in all of the ways in which these things are present. And lastly, um, we invest a lot of time, energy, and support into our professional development for our faculty and staff and our instruction in all of our classes from our very young students all the way up, uh, making sure that we're providing opportunities here on campus um, for faculty and staff to dive into these topics, as well as opportunities for them to go to uh, more national workshops and conferences. Join me now as you hear a little bit from a board member and a parent of two Langley students as she shares how she and the board prioritizes our strategic priorities and our commitment to inclusion. 
I was very lucky this year to be invited to serve on the board of trustees of Langley. And I think the board plays a really critical role in um, helping guide the school in its mission to further explore issues of diversity and inclusion. So I think at the at the highest level, the board's responsibility is to support the strategic vision of the leadership of the school. Um, so that means continuing to prioritize both from a budgetary perspective, things like um, scholarships and tuition assistance. Um, it means prioritizing training and professional development for the teachers and the staff to help them um, support students in that vision. And I think um, continue to think about things like admission and other aspects of diversity in, on the staff and, and faculty as well. I think one piece of advice that I would share as parents are considering Langley or exploring school options, obviously all of us look at schools and try and think about what's right for us and for our family. Um, and I guess I would go back and say Diversity is important in terms of numbers, but the environment that we put our kids in to encourage them to learn is if equally, if not more important. So yes, we don't want our kid to be the only X, whatever, whatever you know, point of diversity we're thinking about, but we also want them to be an environment where their teachers are asking them questions about their background or their um, or they're creating a space for them to learn more about each other. Um, so I think looking at sort of how the school approaches these issues, how open they are to, to topics of diversity and inclusion, um, and what types of training and support teachers have to create environments for students where they can feel truly included um, and bring the all parts of themselves to the to the classroom is really important too. So we've been talking so far today about um, sort of how important we know that diversity and inclusion are for educational settings, but we also know that there's a lot of research coming out on the importance of diversity and inclusion in the workplace. And so in one study by McKinsey, they examined um, hundreds of companies across the world and found that diversity across categories such as gender, race, ethnicity, were strongly correlated with not only greater financial success, but greater satisfaction of employees, higher creativity and innovation, um, and increased productivity. So we know how important this is, not only currently um, at school, but for our students' future careers. And we know that we must prepare our students to successfully operate in diverse work environments and meet employers' expectations regarding cultural awareness. And that's something that we really think about as we plan our SEL lessons and as we think about our curriculum. Um, and importantly, as Nola Ray mentioned, diversity is only an asset when it's coupled with inclusion. So we must create an environment where voices are heard, diversity is valued, and individuals feel safe to hear and share their ideas. So you'll hear now from one of our middle school science teachers, um, who is also the science department chair and also a parent of two Langley students. That's one of the things I love best about having been here at Langley for 17 years is that I, I have seen students go off to college and beyond and become entrepreneurs, changers uh, in, in their fields. Um, students that have done science fair projects in aeronautics here at Langley who are currently uh, making their own products to sell to companies like Garmin or Lockheed Martin uh, and knowing that, that that foundation started here at Langley uh, in this environment where they were able to take risks, where they were able to push themselves, where they were able to get valuable feedback from the entire community so that they knew, okay, maybe I didn't do this right, but I did do these things right, and how can I grow from what uh, I wasn't doing right and make that better? And I've seen that happen uh, with multiple students, and it's such an exciting opportunity for me personally, but more importantly, a reflection of how strong the Langley community is. So this list here is just a number of the um, sort of examples of programs and events that we have here at Langley that foster inclusion. Um, we've mentioned our SEL curriculum, and I wanted to turn our attention just for a moment to our academic curriculum. Um, our teachers here apply the anti-bias education standards to our curriculum. Um, these standards emerged out of work by Louise Derman Sparks with really the goal of ensuring that children demonstrate positive identities, express joy and comfort with diversity, recognize unfairness, and demonstrate the skills to stand up to injustice. 
Um, and again, this is just one of the ways, and you see others listed here, that we really strive to embody um, these values we've been talking about today. There are many community-wide programs, faculty and staff professional development opportunities, family and parent events, as well as education, that again, are all sort of working toward um, our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. So the whole point of doing these webinars and trying to explicate for you different aspects of our community is to get you to come visit us, honestly. We want you to learn about Langley um, enough to, sort of through these webinars that it piques your interest because there really is no better way to get to know us and to feel this lived sense of an inclusive community um, than coming to, to spend some time with us. So we're offering you an opportunity to come to one of our um, information uh, sessions for admission on December the 10th. You can also call our admission office and schedule a visit or a tour. Um, but really, I would strongly encourage you to think about making the time to come and be on the campus. Because when you do that, you'll interact with some of the people that have, have been speaking today. You'll get to know students. You'll hear from teachers. You'll get to know um, Sarah and Nola Ray. And there really is no substitute for doing that in person. It's such, um, living in a community is such a deeply human um, and special uh, part of who we are. We really would encourage you to come. We're going to make time for questions. Before we do that, I thought we'd, I'd show you one more video to kind of um, spark your thinking. My advice for families that are looking into joining the Langley community would be don't wait another second. This is a fabulous community where faculty and staff are passionate about their disciplines. They're passionate about making a difference in the world. Personally, I can say with my experience with my own two children that are here at Langley, they get up on weekend mornings and say, are we going to school today? And when I say no, they say, why not? I can't believe that kind of feedback. What a strong community where they feel every day that they have the opportunity to to have fun and grow and feel supported by their teachers and their peers and everybody in the community. It's really a powerful place. So I would say don't, don't hesitate. So we're going to start with the first question, which is, can you tell me a little bit about the school's commitment to economic diversity? And I think this is a super important question. I think um, one of the things that we know is that independent schools are um, an expensive proposition for a family. And with in a region like Washington, D.C., where there are competing demands on our resources, the pressure uh, to think about making an independent school education affordable is, a, is, a, is, is an obstacle to many families. And as we said at the outset, we believe that a learning environment is made better when not everybody lives in the same neighborhood, in the same zip code, or comes from the same socioeconomic bracket. Tuition assistance is the vehicle that we have to bring socioeconomic diversity to the school. And what we do through our tuition assistance program, when families apply, they use a third party provider to apply for tuition assistance. And we do that because that is an aggregated service that norms those financial aid requests for us so that we can be fair and equitable in how we determine um, what a family might need to make this workable for, for them. It takes into account um, a lot of variables. Um, including how many tuition, how many students are in a tuition charging school. And then we make awards across the spectrum. So there are students here that get significant aid in order to be able to attend Langley. And there are families that get small awards because a small award may be just enough to help them make the numbers in their family budget on a yearly basis work. We do that um, and it's an all in award. So when a, a family receives tuition assistance, um, we don't have a lot of hidden fees, fortunately, at Langley, so it covers the entire experience because we know that for a child to feel like this is their school, that they belong and they're part of the community, they need to know um, that they can go on school trips, that they can play a musical instrument, that they can do all kinds of things. So another uh, question um, is, can you um, say a little bit more about Langley's commitment to diversifying the staff, the faculty, and the board? And I think that's a great question. I will talk about the board, and then maybe Nola Ray can talk about why this is so important from a faculty and staff perspective. But one of my commitments when I came to Langley was that I believed passionately, and you heard from a board member um, who has a real passion around this issue, that the board, it all starts at the top, that the board of trustees has to understand, support, and endorse fully the benefit of a multiculturally inclusive environment. 
And so we do board education around this. We seek trustees who have diverse um, racial, ethnic um, backgrounds so that they can bring that perspective to the strategic decision making that the board has to make. Just like a classroom is made richer by having diversity in the student ranks, so too does a diverse board of an independent school have richer, more nuanced, and more thoughtful conversations about the decisions before them. So at the board level, um, it is certainly a priority. Nola Ray, why don't you say something about faculty and staff? So when it comes to faculty and staff, I think the similar um, issues come up. How do we provide opportunities um, to have more voices at the table? Um, outside of just race, but all areas of um, kind of the big eight or identifiers. Um, not only do they provide really rich discussion in our faculty meetings and our department meetings, but they're also there to provide a different perspective within the classroom. Um, additionally, we know that students gain, all students gain from having the experience of working with diverse adults. And so not only do we want to have students who are from diverse backgrounds to have a representation of themselves um, in our faculty and staff, we also want all of our students to be able to make connections, ask questions, and get support um, from diverse faculty and staff members. Um, it is important for us to be able to see where we can do better, as well as to celebrate um, how rich um, our, and diverse our faculty and staff are right now. That's a great point. And again, I would encourage you to come on campus because I think that when you walk our halls and when you see the kinds of books that students are reading and the way they express themselves through art and you interact with students and teachers and you actually look around our campus, you will see a living and breathing inclusive community. Um, and you can also ask people on the fly what their experiences are. And what we find is when you have those authentic, in the moment, organic experiences, you really get a feel for our, for our community. Thank you for taking time this afternoon out of your very busy day to spend time with us. Uh, we look forward to seeing you on campus, and we're grateful that you spent some time with us on this very important topic. Have a great afternoon.